This is Ms. Pi, and in this video we're going to graph a cubic function. And to start off with, let's just go ahead and graph a basic cubic function. And for the basic cubic function, you have x raised to the third power. And just push enter. And if you can see, as you can see, I'm moving my graph, my formula. The basic cubic function has this curve over here. It shoots straight up, has a curve, and then it has another curve, and then it shoots up again. Okay, I like that curve, or I would like to use that curve to graph this part of my bird, just this part here where it curves down and then goes down further. Okay, so I'm going to have to do transformations because this is one of the types of equations that I can't just click on it and drag it to where I want. So I have to transform the actual equation. Now. This graph is going up, and I want it to go down. So I'm going to first transform it by making it negative. I also want to move the center of this point here to approximately right here. So I'm going to move it to the right. One, two, three, maybe three and a half or three and a fourth units to the right. And then I also want to move it one, two, about two, almost 2 and 2.75 maybe up, okay? And all I'm doing with this is I'm just checking to see it, where I need it to go, okay? And this is going to be very much trial and error. So to get it to move left and right, I'm going to put a set of parentheses around the x, and then inside the parentheses, I'm going to put a minus because I'm moving it to the right, and to move it to the right, we always have to have x minus some number. And I think I said 3.5, right? And then on the very end of the equation, after the exponent, I'm going to add, um, I think 2.75 is what I'm guessing. And let's see what we get. So notice that I kind of have it in the right area, but I need to kind of squish this graph so that this curve kind of is in a little bit more, and then this curve out here kind of goes up a little bit more as well. So I need to do a vertical stretch, and to do that, I need to multiply my cubic function by some number, and let's start off saying, let's see if maybe three is a good fit, okay? So you can see that my line is a little bit closer to the beak here, and it's a little bit closer to the forehead. Let's see if we can get a little bit better. Let's try a much bigger number, 9. And that looks really close. Now, if you can see the bottom of the beak, my bottom of the beak kind of curves in. And I'm limited on the cubic function. I cannot have it curve back in. If it curves back in, then I, have, I, don't, I no longer have a cubic function. Okay, so that's as good as I can get it. But now I need to try to limit my graph, and I want it to stop approximately right here when my y value is 1, and I also want it to stop up here when my y value is 3. And by now you should know that you cannot limit your y values, but what you can do is graph two horizontal lines at y equals three and y equals one. And then we're just gonna find where these lines or graphs intersect. So we're gonna analyze our graph, uh, find the intersection, and you have to tell the calculator which equations you want to intersect. And then do the lower bound and upper bound. And those two will intersect when x is approximately 3.2. Now I want to know where these two intersect, and it actually looks like they intersect at maybe four. Let's see, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to guess probably at four. So I'm not going to bother with the analyzing the graph. Let's just guess it at four. And so let's double click on this and go ahead and set our limit. So we're going to do the such as line, and then negative 3.2 since that's smaller than four and that's less than or equal to x. Remember, whenever you do your limits, you always do the smaller number first and then the bigger number, and we said 4. Um, I don't know why I put a negative there. It should be a positive. All right, let's see how that works. 
So now you can see it limited really good up here, but four is way too small here. So I need to go ahead and maybe instead of a four, try a five and see what that does. Now five is way too far. So obviously with this one, I really should have gone ahead and analyzed my graph. It would have given me a much easier time of it instead of guessing. So let's go ahead and do that. Sometimes we can guess and get really close and sometimes we can't. Uh, whoops, let me get rid of that. So as you can see, my limit should be 4.08. No matter how many times I tried to guess, I probably never would have come up with 4.08. Uh, so, you know, setting up your horizontal lines to find the intersecting point can save you a lot of headache when you otherwise you would just have to guess what the equation is. And you can always go ahead and delete those horizontal lines when you're done with them so that they are out of your way. Okay, and that looks like a really good fit for the beak. And now Eagle's beaks are usually orange, so I'm going to go ahead and change my color and make my line thicker. Uh, I know I've shown you guys this a couple times in some other videos, so to change the, the attributes or the thickness of the line, we went to attributes. To change the color, we went to set conditions. And we're going to just change my color to orange, which is number eight, and I put that for the line color. Okay. And, oh, let me push escape to get rid of all these equations. Now I have my beak done, at least the top part, and we're done.